Hello and welcome back, we're here today and I'm going to show you how to change the gullet bar in a Kenton Masters saddle. This also applies to a Thoroughgood and a Fairfax saddle. So sit back, make yourselves a cup of tea and hopefully enjoy. I was in two minds about whether or not to make this video because I don't want to be encouraging people to change gullet bars without assistance of their saddle fitters. However, over the last few months, I've been contacted by so many people on my Facebook page and on here that I've realized that a lot of people actually don't have access to a saddle fitter. So what I'm going to do today is not in any way meant to replace a saddle fitter because we all know that changing the gullet bar in your saddle isn't all that there is to saddle fitting, is there? Mm -mm -mm. There's loads more to it and that is what your qualified saddle fitter is for. However, some of you haven't got access to a saddle fitter, some saddle fitters aren't working at the moment because of lockdown, so this is just a really quick guide on how to change your gullet bar. But these saddles are made for the owner to be able to change the gullet bar. There's lots of adjustable saddles that only we as saddle fitters can do, but these ones are designed for you as an owner to also be able to change. Therefore, I hope it's okay that I'm making this video and I hope you do understand that this is not a replacement for a saddle fitter. Lecture over, let's get started. I'm doing this on a little pony one today just because it fits on the desk a little bit easier. This is a little Kenton Masters pony saddle. These ones, the screws are underneath here. These two little screws, can we see them? This is what we're changing here today. This is what we're unscrewing first. We're gonna unscrew these two little screwy dewy bits here. Get your little allen key, you can use something like this. I also use an electric one usually, or you can just use the allen key that came with it. And you literally pop your little allen key in the hole and give it a screw. First screw, done. Make sure you put the screw somewhere safe because I don't want to tell you how many times I've lost a screw. Screw number two. Now, we have to, the next bit now is to make sure we get this, can we see this little bit of stitching here? This, and we can feel it's got something hard in it. This hard bit in here is called the point of the tree. And we're gonna get this point out of its little pocket like that. So we pull it up and out. You can pull this out if you want. If you do pull the strap out, you need to pull it out of that little bit there. Um, I tend to leave mine in personally. And then I take the panel and I just tuck it back there. There we go, now we can start to see the gullet bar come out. We're going to do the same to this side. So we've got this little point, we're going to pull the point out of the point pocket and just tuck it the other side there. There we go, so now in here we have the gullet bar. Pull this little flap down, there we go, we can see that gullet bar there. This is an orange bar, this is wide, forward slash extra wide. Now we just do the same with these screws here. Make sure you keep the little dingle dangly bits, which have a name. We're we'll calling what it is. Keep them on. Put it somewhere safe. So now we've got all of the little screws out. We literally take out the bar. And then we're left here with, you can see the little indentation where the bar goes back in. Now we're gonna get our new bar and we're gonna put it in. Now, if you're wondering which way to put the bar in, because some go in different ways than others, when you look at the bar, it's got a like a slanted edge on one side. So it's got a straight edge on one side and a slanted edge on the other side. And if you're wondering which way to put it in, because on some saddles they go in with the slanted edge facing back and some they go in with the slanted edge facing forward. So if you're not sure which way it goes in, if you look at the little indentation mark for it, you will see on this one that the slanted edge is here and the straight edge is here. So we put it in the same way as the indentation tells us to. We pop it in there like that. Now, if you're widening it a lot, you sometimes find that if it's been, for example, so if it's been like quite narrow for quite a long time and you're trying to widen it, it can help at this point just to sort of push it open a little bit. So push it wider and you pop your bar in. Again, looking at the indentation, pop your bar in and line it up with the holes. What I would do is I would put the first screw in fairly loosely just to make sure we can find all of the holes. On these newer bars, they've got like an oval shaped hole. 
on the very old ones they had a round shaped hole and it was a little bit trickier with an oval shaped hole the good news is it's easier to find the hole because you've got a little bit more kind of play I guess with the oval shape so we'll pop that in here now one thing about the oval shaped hole with having a little bit more play means you can put it in slightly askew so make sure you put it in centrally and pop your first screw in I tend to put it on one of the lower ones and just do it a couple of turns so it's in there it's not going to come out but it's not done up tight and then I like to mix it up and go for an end one and again do the same just a couple of turns if you've got your screws and you don't know which ones are your gullet bar screws and which ones are your like external screws then the gullet bar screws tend to be silver and the external ones tend to be black see inside outside also if you've been good and kept your little dingle dangly bit on then you'll know that this is an internal one because it's got the dingle dangle on so again just putting it in loosely and then that last one in loosely now when it's in i like to push it down check it's all in the right place before I start to tighten them up. Now, now they're all in and they're all done up just about and I'm just going to go around and I'm going to do one more little tighten of each one because we want to make sure they're not going to work their way loose under normal work. Now it's tricky because you don't want to do them too loose but equally you don't want to do them too tight because they have to be undoable again. So I don't kind of like hand tight this. I a strong hand. Mm. Get a strong hand to type this. There we go, they are all back in. So we're gonna fold this little bit of leather back. Now this is the bit that a lot of people get wrong or forget, or I don't even know, they just do it, they just don't do it, and then it causes problems. Or sometimes they do it on one side and not the other, and then that's even worse. So we need to make sure, remember these little pockets here? Remember this little pocket in here? Little pocket there? Yeah, see it? that little point here this little plastic point has got to go back into that point pocket like that if you've also taken out the girth strap pop that back in at the same time like that, and then pull everything tight and make sure that's in properly and that the little screw hole lines up do that on the other side making sure we put that little point here back into its little pocket you see there slid in there pull it strapped through and again, make sure that both holes line up. Now get one of your little black screws. And again, like with the internal ones, another little quick tighten up once it's all done because we don't want them coming undone. Now I use one of these little things because it's got all the different types on it. And it's easier for me not to lose because I'm a bit prone to losing um, Allen keys. Allen keys? Hex key. Some people call them hex keys, some people call them Allen keys. I'm prone to losing them. I don't lose this so much because it's A, brightly coloured, and B, 8,000 times the size. So there we go, that's all done, all put back together. One last thing is just to check that those points are most definitely in those point pockets on both sides, because that is very important and it's something that a lot of people forget. Now, if you're having trouble putting it in, so say you get the screw, so say you manage to screw it up and then the screw goes in on an angle and it gets a little bit stuck and you kind of get it done halfway and you can't get it any tighter, stop screwing, take it out, straighten everything back up, straighten the screw back up and screw it in properly, because otherwise you'll do what's called cross-threading the screw and you'll make the screw so it doesn't work properly anymore. It has to go back in the hole properly. All the screws on these should sit neatly. They should all go all the way in, sit neatly. The bar should sit neatly. Sometimes the screws sort of lose their screwiness on the end, so you can find that the first the first turn you can turn forever and ever and ever and it doesn't kind of catch. In that case, um, a little bit of pressure on the screw as you screw it in can help, or contact Kenton Masters, Thoroughgood, Fairfax and ask them for some new screws um, or buy them online because sometimes you just need a new screw and it's better to get a new screw and to maintain that nice healthy screw hole than it is to knacker it up by forcing the old one back in for the sake of a couple of quid. I always like to check the flocking as well afterwards, check that it's all still nice and smooth because folding the panels back sometimes you kink the flocking a little bit. This one is okay if you've got any questions or queries about garlic bars or adjustable saddles in general then don't forget to ask below in the comments coming up next week we've got some more saddle fitting videos and i'm hoping to take another closer look at some other adjustable saddles so if you're interested in that don't forget to subscribe and if you press the notification bell you'll get a notification when new videos are uploaded in the meantime take care stay safe lots and lots of love <laughs>